On today's episode of The Good, The Bad, The Verdict, let's take a look at the Samsung Galaxy S21. So if you don't know already, The Good, The Bad, The Verdict is pretty simple. It's right there in the name. I look at the good of the phone, the bad of the phone, and I give you guys a final verdict. So without wasting any time, let's get right into the good. So starting off, I love this flat display. It is honestly like completely flat. There's no curve, there's no edge. It fits right in and it, it just feels so good. Uh, it sits absolutely flush with the frame of the phone and it feels way better than any curved display I've ever used. Uh, the display itself is fantastic as well. Um, it's now a downgrade from last year, but it is still a 1080p with 120 hertz of refresh rate and it's got the thinnest bezels I've seen on a flat display ever. That's even the iPhone comparatively and it's got a very small punch hole camera too. So overall the display just looks really good when you look at it, it's really awesome. And talking about the perfect display, this phone's size is honestly so well thought out. I just really like the way it's, uh, you know, uh, the shape, the weight, the, uh, the overall dimensions. The S21 is honestly, I think, one of the best sized phones out there. It's a perfect compromise between having a big enough screen so that you're not struggling to you know, enjoy content, but not so big as to it's uncomfortable. Same goes with the battery. You know, it's got a pretty decent 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and it just does. It I think it finds the perfect compromise, and uh, you really don't need to go up to the S21 Plus, in my opinion. The S21 really does cut it the right way. Let's talk about the design as well. So this is a, a unique design from Samsung. It's all new, and I I do like it. I'm not I, initially I was not sure if I would I, I like this or not. Over time, I've grown to like it. I do like that it's quite unique, and I think that the design also serves a purpose here, and it you know acts as a uh, shield for the camera. The aluminum frame and the aluminum uh, camera design here serves to protect the camera even more, and honestly, who can complain about that? I do like that it's not as generic as Android phones have become. It does look unique, and you really don't see this on other smartphones, so uh, I do like the design as well. And on the topic of the design, we have to talk about build quality, which is, what you expect from Samsung. It's high up there. You don't really, there's no creaks. There's no uh, rattle. You know, you can shake the phone around. You can bend it, twist it. It is extremely solid. And I do want to note that this does have a plastic back. Now for some that may be a disadvantage, but look at it from my point of view right now. You have a plastic back that will not crack if you drop it. And you have an aluminum frame, which is pretty strong and will absorb falls, drops, everything. And the camera is also covered with this aluminum here. So durability wise, it's fantastic, right? You don't have to worry too much about it. You can actually genuinely lock, rock this phone without a case and not worry about damaging it or breaking it in a way that would be expensive to replace, uh, uh, fix, I'm sorry. I, I really think that uh, this phone does a good job of that. And um, you know, just, I know that glass is a premium thing and I do, think that uh, there are things that should be there in certain price point phones. But um, the one aspect of glass that I'm sorry, of this plastic, I will say is that it feels expensive. It doesn't feel cheap. If you would have told me this is glass, I would have believed you. There's no way to really tell with the matte coating on the back. It doesn't feel cheap at all. Moving on, let's talk about the battery life. The battery life is actually surprisingly good. It was a little bit better than the S20 FE that I used, which has a bigger battery. I'm not exactly sure what's up. I think a combination of the smaller screen with uh, the more variable refresh rate and a more efficient Snapdragon 888 is kind of all coming to play here and making this phone give you just a little bit better battery life. But I'm very impressed. It, it, for 4,000 milliamp hours, I was getting above six hours pretty consistently. Now I know it could be better. It's not the best, but for a single day of use, I was ending most days at about 10%. So I was getting through the day. Sure, I would have liked to have a little bit more charge left over, but it did the job just fine. Another thing I really like about this phone is the camera setup. Now, the camera setup on this is very functional. You've got a wide, an ultra wide, and a telephoto, a 3X telephoto. All three of these cameras are actually good. They produce very respectable images and there's no unnecessary hype or craziness this time around with them. They're, they're very straightforward and they do a decent job. I have not been disappointed by this camera even once. And I think that um, for most people, this will be an excellent all round camera. Another thing I do wanna give props to Samsung for is the optical sensor. They have improved it for sure over the last two or three years. Uh, it came out with the S10 and it was a little bit annoying at first. It didn't feel as smooth. I preferred optical ones, but uh, the ultrasonic here is just fantastic. 
Um, I'm sorry, I, I called it optical in the beginning. I meant ultrasonic. The Samsung phones have an ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. It's a lot faster. There's way less, you know, the uh, issues I had before of it not authenticating or having to try two times almost every time all smoothed out and I think that it's perfect. It also, it's in the right location, right at, right here, around here. And it, it feels very natural and comfortable to kind of place your thumb there and open it up. Like uh, most of the time I can do it without even looking at the phone. I could just like pull it out of my pocket and by the time it's, uh, you know, I'm looking at the display, uh, it's already unlocked because I rested my thumb right there. Uh, very, it feels very natural that positioning. So moving on, let's talk about performance. Uh, the S21 has a Snapdragon 888, eight gigs of RAM, and I think it does its job perfectly well. I have had no issues with performance whatsoever, no slowdowns, no hiccups. Now I'm not a gamer, so I don't know what exactly gaming performance is like, but um, from everything I put it through, no issues whatsoever. And I think performance is something you won't be disappointed with with the S21. And you know, side by side, Samsung has gotten way better with their updates as well. So that's something to look forward to. Moving on, let's talk about the bad. So the bad here is that uh, this is, you know, a kind of downgrade from the uh, Samsung S20 in many ways. And not only is it a not only is it a downgrade, you did get a price reduction to $800 from $1,000, but I still think this $800 price point is a little bit too much. $700 or $750 is where I think is fair for this. And I think Samsung knows that too, because this phone has been selling consistently for $700 on and off on Amazon, and you can find deals all over the place for it. So if you get this for under $750, bucks, great deal. No worries whatsoever. Uh, I, in fact, paid $700 for this. So I, I And this was, you know, at launch. At launch, I got it for $800. Uh, Amazon dropped the price a week later, I asked Samsung and they price matched it. So I effectively paid $700 for this phone and I'm very happy. At $700, it will be very hard to find a phone better than this. Uh, moving on, you know, as I was talking about the downgrades here, there are some key things that are missing. Number one, as I said, there's no 1440p display anymore. This is a 1080p only. Uh, the S line has been 1440p for as long as I can remember. So bringing it down to 1080 is a little bit of a downgrade. Um, the micro SD card slot is gone now, uh, and it's moved to a plastic back instead of that glass, you know, premium stuff. And at $800, a plastic back and uh, these few, a few of these things, it's just a little bit of a gut punch. Um, not to mention there's no charger in the box anymore. There's so many things that are missing, but uh, uh, it's, you know, the, the lack of the charger wasn't as annoying to me as the hypocrisy of it was. They were hypocrites completely. They just a few months before this phone launched, they were making fun of Apple for it. They, they even posted, look at what our phone comes with. It comes with a charger, but immediately the next launch, they, they remove it as well. So it's just frustrating to me, uh, you know, how they get hypocritical about this stuff sometimes. And moving on, just talking about the, the unboxing experience on itself, it was very disappointing. Um, Samsung used to have the best unboxing experience, even better than Apple um, in the S8, S9 days. They were so, so good. Like I still have those boxes and I still marvel at how amazing the experience was. Um, now it's not, it's very cheap materials. The phone just kind of, Honestly, at this, I feel like if you move one step down, they're just gonna give it to you in a plastic baggie and be like, hey, ha be happy we're, you're getting that. It's just a big step down. The materials feel cheap and that, that fit and finish, you know, that quality is not there from the immediate there, uh, you know, beginning, which sucks because it, it doesn't start you off with a high, you know, impression of the phone, but it doesn't take away from the experience of the phone, which I'm glad to report about. So, Finally, what's the verdict on this? And I wrote, I wrote something down, so let me just read it. Um, I honestly think this is one of the best phones Samsung has made in a long time. Uh, it hits all the right notes, and I found it really hard to put this phone down after uh, I was done reviewing it. It's just that good, you know? Even though I had to move on to review other devices, I was putting it off as much as I could because the S21 is just such a fantastic phone. Honestly, I struggled to come up with things that I don't like about this phone. There's just so much that's good about it that there, there's not as much bad. And I think that that's the highest praise you can get in, in, in a review format like this. Um, Samsung is doing a great job right now with their S line. Um, and I really think that uh, if you're looking for it, buy. This phone is a very, very easy one to recommend. Um, and if you're looking to buy an Android phone under $1,000, the S lineup is amazing. You can't go wrong with any of them. All three of them are really well executed. They have the great, a great feature set and they work exactly as you'd expect them. And you won't regret it, simple as that. So definitely buy this phone and let me know what you think of the Galaxy S lineup this year. If you bought an S21, S21 Plus or S21 Ultra, let me know what your experience has been so far and what you think of it down in the comments below. 
And if you haven't already, be sure to follow me over on social media. I have all the behind the scenes and just extra content over there. So be sure to check it out. All the handles right here on the screen and of course down in the description as well. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel for more Samsung content. We're going to have the S S21 go up against the OnePlus 9 and that's going to be an interesting comparison. So that's it for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.